Hello and welcome to Excel Highway. In today's video, I want to continue with the onboarding process for a new employee. Last video, I talked about how to create a form. So you can create a form for your employee with the onboarding parts, the intro, the products, etc., etc. In this video, I want to take that one step further and show you how you can create a Google Sheets that links to those forms in a way that you can start tracking your progress or your employee's progress, which forms did they complete and who is uh, still waiting for, to do something. Uh, I'm sharing the, the, the screen. You can see the dashboard, which is the end result. You have your employee names over here. What is the status of their progress? Whether it's in progress, did not start or completed. Obviously, you see the chart on the right, which immediately lets you know where you stand. 50% are done. 12.5, which is one out of eight, did not start, and the rest are in progress. You also see the last event that each of them, um, or the last form that they completed, and what was the date of that event. If you'd like to learn how to do that, stick around. I'll walk you through it every step of the way. Today's video is sponsored by Connecting. So in the last video, I showed you how to create the forms. Not going to do that again. What I did do is take that one form, big form that I created, and split it into four small forms. And the reason is, since these forms don't have um, any questions, it's just information, um, once the user clicks on Submit, then a line will appear over here with the timestamp and their email, so you know they read that form. So basically what I did for each of those forms in the settings, sorry, in the responses, I just linked them to um, to the sheet, right? To the same sheet. So it creates four different uh, responses sheets. I just changed the names to match the names of the forms themselves. The only difference here is with the quiz. Here I changed the um, form to a quiz just so people can see their results and their score immediately which is kind of nice plus you get like a score at the end that you can use if you want to see their score later on and either ask them to redo the test or whatever but anyway those four forms will generate those um, lines in these four um, uh, sheets uh, um, then i have a sheet called onboarding status. This is where you basically set up your database of employees. So I have your fake names and fake emails, obviously, courtesy of ChatGBT. So I have these uh, names and then I have this formula. Basically, I'm going to look for their name, okay, within the relative uh, uh, form and return an index. So what is the uh, um, in column A. So I'm looking for, and they're all structured the same, right? Because the name is in column B and the date is in column A. So I'm looking for the date in column B. That's going to return a match. That's going to return a number, the row number. And I'm just going to use index to return that same row number, but in column A. And that's what you see over here. So basically, those are the same functionality, just different sheet names. And here for the um, Quiz score, I'm just uh, returning the number that I got over here. Now, I'm not sure why, but you don't, you only see the number, you see? It doesn't return five out of five, it returns five. So I had to also calculate using count A, the number of questions that I have. So count A will return, in case you have more questions, right? So it's going to return a number over here. So that's going to give us the quiz, and I have the past quiz. So let's say I want at least 80% of the answers to be correct. So that's just something we can use. I don't use it here in this sheet, in this file, but you can definitely use that just to show who passed or not. So that's how you generate the onboarding status, which basically pulls all the data. Today's video is sponsored by Connecting. Connecting is an app that simplifies all your business operation management. It's a perfect solution to manage, train, and communicate with your non-desk employees. 
Employees use the mobile app for everything, while managers can also use a desktop version with more abilities. Connect Team offers solutions for scheduling, time tracking, and much more. Today I will focus on the employees onboarding process that can be done via Connect Team. I want to show you Connect Team's excellent platform for controlling your employees onboarding process. Simply click on courses and select the onboarding course. We created that last video. Now you can see that the status of your employees. For example, I can see that two employees have not started. I can click them and send a reminder, create a task for them, and do much more. I can see two employees have started are and are in progress. I can also click on each section of the course and see the status for that section. Connecting allows you to track your employees' submissions of courses and their compliance. Another feature that helps track employee compliance and qualification is the document feature that allows employees and new hires to upload their documentation directly from their mobile devices. I want you to be familiar with the documents feature. It lets you keep all the documents related to your users in one place. The expiration date capability allows you to keep track of when these documents need to be renewed. These dates can be specific to a document or according to a user's entry. I highly recommend you start using Connecting for your daily operation. Use my affiliate link in the description. Start your 14 free day trial or one year for up to 10 user companies. Next step is to create a database and basically restructure the information so I can use for this. For the chart that's why i'm structuring it this way so how is this built i have basically these columns the 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 index number of the employee so this will show you basically uh, the number of events it's a counter so if i had five events this would go five lines see it's counting the event using count ifs quiz relatively to the area above it so next time you see quiz, it's going to be two, three, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to give me this together with this will give me uh, the uh, table, how many lines I, I want to have. Now it's all a matter of assigning the job employee name and employee email from the onboarding status sheet, because this is going to be employee number one, two, three, et cetera. So I'm just going to use offset. Using offset with that number relatively to A2. So starting from here, I'm just going to go a few a rows, each row compared to what I have over there. And for two columns, that's what offset does. It's returning, returns an array. It's going to be a one dimension or two dimension array. In this case, it's a, it's a two dimension array because I also am returning two columns. That's going to bring me that. The completion date of said event, that's where I'm going to use index match on the onboarding status. I'm going to use index match on this column and this row. So based on the name of the event and the name of the employee, I'm just going to get that value, that intersection of the two using index match. If you're not familiar with index match, I recommend that you do get familiar with it. It's a very powerful formula. Uh, it's a combination of two, actually. Match will return the... It's, it's a combination of VLOOKUP and age lookup, so to speak. So it will return the number of row over here and the column number and the intersection between the two of them will re return that number. It's what, what's nice when you use index match and not VLOOKUP is that you can just drag formulas um, and you see it checks the employee name and the event. If I had to use VLOOKUP, I'd have to have a dynamic column number, which would probably be the same formula, but just looks a bit different. So I like to use that. Lastly, the event, I'm using transpose. For the onboarding status, so I'm going to return those names, and those are only four. And over here, I'm just going to use equal and drag that all the way. So this is set up for up to 12 employees. Of course, this could be dragged for as much as you want. Over here, I have the summary that I use for the dashboard. And the reason I put it over here and not over here is just to not interfere with the dashboard. And if you hide or do whatever, so it's not doesn't go away. Simple count ifs, so it's going to count ifs um, the number of employees. Sorry, going to dashboard, it's going to count 
the number of employees over here with the status, which we'll see how it's calculated over here. So back to the dashboard, employee name, that is gonna return this array. Okay, I'm using offset with the count, so count will count the number of um, rows. That's gonna return the employee name. The status is gonna check these parts. So let's take a look, how is this calculated? So this will filter, this is interesting. So this is gonna filter uh, this person from the database. Let's see how it's how it's built. So column B equals A and column E equals D, which is the last event date. So basically it's gonna go over here. Since the date is a time, it's safe to assume it's gonna be unique. So think of it as, as, as if you're filtering the employee name, the completion date, which is the last one, right? And we'll see how that is calculated. That's very simple out using max ifs. So max ifs is a combination of max, which is the max number, with ifs. So you have conditioning, first of all, the range, column E, and then column B equals A. So that's just going to give me, and this is why I use this format and not here, because you could do it possibly as well, but I just liked this to, it was much easier for me to build all the formulas. So the maximum of this column for this employee, that's going to give me that last event, because assuming the person will run through these four in, a, in the right order. So once I know the date and the name, I can filter and get that last event, which is what appears over here. And the status is just a combination of ifs. So if it's the quiz, I know I'm done because that's the last event, so it's going to be completed. If there is a date here, that means I'm in progress. Otherwise, one, which is true, so to speak, did not start. So if I have a line like this where I don't have a date, did not start. And of course, A5 equal greater than zero, so I don't want to see anything here. Otherwise, that, miss, that will misrepresent the dashboard. Back to the database sheet. So this one is just a count ifs, very simple, based on the status. And the pie chart, very simple. You select all three, insert chart, and uh, there you go. Why it's not with the completed. That's strange, okay. So you can manually adjust the data range and you can see this, you can customize and change things like a title, pie chart, and uh, here in the middle or whatever you want. And of course you can change the, um, where is it? The slices. So it tell, asks you what color you want. So you saw I changed the colors. So you can do that as well. Do whatever you want. So that's nice. And then of course you can just copy and paste it over here and then delete it. And that's what I did. Um, yeah, so I hope this is interesting to you and you found this content valuable. If you did, please leave a comment. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Subscribe so you don't miss the new um, video coming up. And I'll see you next time.